Welcome back to Bucko Booth, everybody. Our second week back here on the podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. It was a a fun baseball week for baseball fans. We had the MLB draft, so some live, I guess a live baseball event for the first time since the second week of March, and it was an exciting two-day event. We had rounds, well, round one on Wednesday night, rounds two through five on Thursday night. Pirates made six selections in the draft, the second most out of any team. And today the podcast is going to be centered around sort of diving into the draft and what the Pittsburgh Pirates were able to do in it and what the path forward could look like for Major League Baseball's return to play proposals, how the owners and the players are going back and forth with each other, and what Rob Manfred might do pretty soon considering the clock is ticking on a baseball season. Pittsburgh Pirates starter Chris Archer will miss all of 2020 after undergoing surgery. So who is next in line to take over his rotation spot? A little over a week ago, the Pittsburgh Pirates lost right-handed pitcher Chris Archer to thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. You can... Uh, we, we talked a little bit about that back on last episode. Archer is now set to miss all of the 2020 season if it is played. Obviously, the veteran righty was a lock for the rotation. He, along with Mitch Keller, Joe Musgrove, Trevor Williams, and offseason signee Derek Holland, are most likely going to make up the team starting five. However, with an empty spot in the rotation, who will take over the final spot if the season gets started? Well... On the MLB roster, Chad Cool could be the next in line for starting duties. Cool is returning from Tommy John surgery that kept him out of most of 2018 and all of 2019. Since his debut in 2016, Cool has shown promise, but has so far put up unimpressive numbers. Through his 313 career innings, the right-hander has a 4.37 ERA, 4.30 FIP, and 1.42 WHIP. Cool has a career strikeout rate of just 20.4% and walk rate of 9.2%, resulting in an overall mediocre 2.21 strikeout to walk ratio. Home runs have also been an issue with a career 1.1 home runs per nine. ERA predictors haven't been kind to him as well with a 4.61 Sierra, 4.52 XFIP, and 4.94 DRA. But looking at his pitches, Cool has some real potential. He can get his fastball up into the mid to upper 90s and is in the top 96th percentile of curveball spin rate. He has even drawn some comparisons to Garrett Cole and Zach Wheeler in terms of his velocity and movement. Left-hand pitcher Steven Brault also represents another potential starter to take over the final spot. Brault, like Cole, also made his debut in 2016 and has mainly served as a swing man throughout his career. 35 of his 89 career games have been starts, but he doesn't have the same potential Cole does. Brault has a career 4.88 ERA, 4.80 FIP, and 1.57 WHIP in 273 innings. He also has a 5.01 DRA and 5.14 XFIP. Brault has below average spin rate on both his curveball and fastball, both sitting in the bottom 10th percentile. He also hasn't been great at limiting free passes with a career 11.3% walk rate. Brault did have a stretch in 2019 where he was a fairly effective starter. From May 29th to September 1st, the lefty posted a 2.84 ERA and a 3.64 3.46 FIP and a 672 opponent OPS, but he only pitched 69 and a two thirds innings and missed nearly all of July because of injury. One of the Pittsburgh Pirates' offseason minor league signings could be a potential under the radar signing in lefty Robbie Erlin. Despite his subpar looking career 4.57 ERA, Erlin has a strong 3.51 FIP, has posted an excellent excuse me, I suppose an excellent expected ERA below 3 in two of the past four seasons he has played and has a career 3.84 Sierra and 3.86 DRA. Erlin is a high-end control pitcher. He has allowed walks at 4.3% rate in his career and has a sub-2 walks per nine sitting at 1.8. Although he doesn't strike out that many batters, 
he still sits just below 20% at 19.1%. His opponent average exit velocity sits almost exactly at average at 87.6 miles per hour. A former top prospect in the early 2010s, Erling could be a solid fill-in for the last rotation spot. Prospect-wise, aside from Keller, the Pittsburgh Pirates do not have that many MLB-ready options, but they do have a potential starter in JT Brewbaker. Brewbaker is the team's 25th best prospect per fan graphs. When he has been healthy, Brewbaker has been pretty effective. In 2018, Brewbaker split innings between AA, he had 35 innings there, and AAA, where he pitched the majority of the year with 119 innings. In total, he had a 2.81 ERA, 1.26 whip, and 3.20 FIP. Although not a big strikeout pitcher with a 20.2% strikeout rate, he only allowed a walk rate of 6.8% and 8 home runs. Although he only pitched 27 and 2 thirds innings in 2019, 21 at AAA, <coughs> and 6 and 2 thirds at low A, Brew Baker still allowed just 7 earned runs and struck out 24, walked 8, and gave up 2 home runs. Aside from 2019, Brew Baker is quite durable. It's the first time he failed to reach at least 129 and two thirds innings in a season since 2015, the year he was drafted. In 2018, he averaged about nearly five and two thirds innings a start. And the Pittsburgh Pirates also have a few other internal options in James Marvel, Hector Noesi, and Brandon Waddell. But none of them are considered front runners for the final spot, more like just depth pieces. The Pirates could also look for another starter through trade, like making a salary dump trade for an innings eater such as Mike Leak. The free agent market is pretty barren, but they could sign a veteran that has seen success in recent years after struggling in 2019, like Clay Buckholtz, Andrew Castro, Marco Estrada, or Jason Vargas as more depth. So the question now becomes is who will take that fifth and final rotation spot? You would assume the top four go to Trevor Williams, Joe Musgrove, Mitch Keller, and Derek Holland. Obviously, losing Chris Archer to thoracic outlet syndrome and probably ending his Pirates career does not help the Pirates 2020 rotation if indeed they do get a season off. Now, I would say the front runner for that fifth and final rotation spot is Chad Cool. Just because of his, not necessarily his track record, but what he could provide potential wise for the Pirates. Now, understanding that an MLB season could be 48 games, given the fact that the owners and players are, are really failing to exit their trenches in negotiations. A 48-game season is seeming to be more likely. Now, the the concern with Chad Cole and the reason why he probably wasn't going to make the rotation out of a normal 2020 season is because he is coming off of that Tommy John surgery and uh, that they wanted to see, you know, where he was out of the bullpen. But given the fact that there is no Archer and that the season is likely to be 48 games, Chad Cole would only have to make you know, a dozen starts. If that, probably like nine, ten starts. So innings-wise, Chad Cool would have to work between 50 to 80 innings out there on the mound, which is not a lot to ask. And which is very doable for an arm that they that they want to protect because, again, Chad Cool has been compared to the likes of Garrett Cole and Zach Wheeler. And that's why you would put him in that rotation. Because in a normal year, and I predicted this too, that the Pirates should be a last place team. But this is not a normal year. A 48 game season is not going to be a normal year. And that's why I believe you you do put Chad Cool. But I also do like the idea of Stephen Brawl. I love, love and very underrated signing in Robbie Erlin. And then JT Brubaker as well. I feel like... If Chad Cool doesn't live up to the bill of what he could be, and Derek Holland obviously isn't going to stick around forever, and Jameson Tynan coming back next year, uh, JT Brubaker's probably next to enter the rotation. Then you have guys like James Marvel, Hector Noesi, Brandon Waldell, and I wouldn't put it past Ben Charrington to make a trade once the rosters open up for a guy like Mike Leake or sign a Clay Buckle, sign an Andrew Kashner, 
sign a Marco Estrada or Jason Vargas. There's, there are plenty of options to go to. The, the question just becomes, will it help out a rotation that struggled mightily in 2019? The Pittsburgh Pirates 2020 draft is complete. Now it's time to dive into how Ben Sherrington did in his first draft as Pirates general manager. Ben Sherrington's first year as general manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates has been anything but normal. This included the 2020 MLB draft, which consisted of just five rounds over the course of Wednesday and Thursday nights. However, this did not stop Sherrington from making his first draft with the Pirates a successful one. The Pittsburgh Pirates entered the draft with an underrated farm system that was on the rise. Looking to add talent to said farm system, Charrington was successful in the draft. This began with the team's pick at number 7 overall. With the 7th overall pick in the draft, the Pirates selected New Mexico State infielder Nick Gonzalez. Prior to the draft, Gonzalez was almost universally viewed as a top 5 player in the draft and arguably the best all-around college hitter on the board. Surprisingly, he fell to number 7. This made selecting him a no-brainer move for Charrington. Gonzalez led the NCAA in batting in 2019. He then followed that up with an MVP season in the Cape Cod League. Gonzalez will likely become a top 100 prospect in baseball and be on the fast track to the major leagues. With our compensation pick at number 31, the Pittsburgh Pirates chose another high-selling player in University of South Carolina pitcher Carmen Majinski. Like Gonzalez, Majinski was lights out in the Cape Cod League last year. While there are some questions about his control and ability to repeat his delivery, some teams had him as a top 10 to 20 talent in the draft for a reason. This then takes us to day two of the draft. Kicking off day two, the Pittsburgh Pirates selected right-handed pitcher Jared Jones out of Whittier, California. Jones is currently committed to the University of Texas, but the Pirates are likely going to be able to sign him. Jones could find himself higher among pitching prospects than even Majinski. His stuff is nothing short of electric, including terrific spin rate numbers. His fastball, 92.4 average, miles per hour 95.1 at the peak. Spin rate is at 2,554 revolutions per minute RPM. His curveball sits at 76 average, peak out at 79.25. Spin rate, 2,659. Slider sits at 81, uh, 82 average, peaking at 83 miles per hour. Spin rate, 2,707. The changeup sits around 83, peaks at 85. Spin rate, 1,821. While Jones is a ways away from the MLB level, look for him to quickly become one of the team's top pitching prospects. This pick could prove to be one of the biggest steals in the draft. If Jones was not the steal of the draft for the Pirates, then fourth-round pick Nick Garcia was. Prior to the draft, there were teams who had Garcia as a first-round talent, and the Pirates got him in the fourth round. Third round, my bad. They drafted the right-handed pitcher out of Chapman University. To be honest, Garcia has a higher floor than Majinski, even if his ceiling is not quite as high. Garcia may also have the ability to climb through the team's minor league system quicker. Garcia was another draft pick, like Gonzalez and Jones, that gets an A grade. In round four, the Pirates selected Appalachian State right-handed pitcher Jack Hartman. While Hartman's ceiling is not as high as some others in this class, he does have the makeup of potentially being a shutdown back end of the bullpen arm. Those are always important. Additionally, on Hartman, the team will likely be able to sign him to an underslot deal. This will give them more money to have at their disposal when negotiating with other draft picks, specifically Jones. With their final pick of the draft, the Pittsburgh Pirates selected another right-handed college pitcher. With the 138th pick overall in the draft, the Bucks selected Northwestern State product Logan Hoffman. Hoffman was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals last year, but did not sign. In a shortened college season this spring, he was dominant, striking out 38 batters and posting a 0 ERA in 28 innings of work. Yes, a 0 ERA. Hoffman also pitched in the Cape Cod League last summer, pitching to the tune of a 3.54 ERA to go with 27 strikeouts in 20 and a third innings of work. He earned Cape Cod League All-Star honors. 
Once again, Chanton made it obvious he valued college players and 